No man's life can be encompassed in one telling. There is no way to give each year its justified weight, to include each event, each of the elders, friends, and other people who helped to shape a lifetime. What can be done is to be faithful in spirit to the record and to try to find one's way to the heart of the man. A man who is the representative of God on earth for these turbulent times through which our world is passing. A man about whom God himself revealed over a hundred years ago to the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, on a number of times. In December 1907, God told the promised Messiah, I am with you, O Masrur. In January 1907, the promised Messiah wrote, I saw in my dream my son Sharif Ahmad, who was wearing a turban, and there were two men standing near him. One of them pointing to him said, Here comes the king. And the other one said, He has yet to be the judge first. On the 28th of May 1907, God revealed, Allah has made him Amir, contrary to expectation. On the 10th of January 1907, the promised Messiah said, A few years back, I had said in a vision about my son Sharif Ahmad, Now you sit down in my place, and I shall leave. These revelations were fulfilled by the progeny of Hadrat Mirza Sharif Ahmad, in the person of Hadrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi V, the present head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And this is the story of his life. In his Friday sermon of the 8th of September 1950, Hadrat Khalifa Masih II said, The promised Messiah said that I am departing, but God will send the second manifestation for you. But our Lord does not only have the second manifestation, he has the third manifestation as well. And he does not only have the third manifestation, he has the fourth manifestation also, followed by the fifth and the sixth manifestation. And thus the hand of God will keep showing this miracle to the world. He further said, The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, once said that when religion will be in danger, God will send a few people of Persian descent to defend it. The promised Messiah was one of them, and so am I. And it is also possible that under this prophecy there may be others of the Persian descent who will be sent to uphold the magnificence of religion and to strengthen its foundations. Just a few days after this faith-inspiring address, God sent to this world Sahibzada Mirza Masru Ahmad who was born on the 15th of September 1950 in Rabwa, Pakistan, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community's headquarters. He is the great-grandson of the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hadrat Mirza Khulam Ahmad, the promised Messiah, and the grandson of the youngest son of the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Sharif Ahmad Sahib, and the maternal grandson of Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi II. He is the son of Hadrat Sahibzada Mirza Mansur Ahmad and Hadrat Sahibzadi Nasir Begum. Sahibzada Mirza Masrur Ahmad completed his primary education at the Talimul Islam High School, Rabwa, and obtained his BA from the Talimul Islam College, Rabwa, Pakistan. In 1976, he earned his Master's of Science degree in Agricultural Economics from the Agriculture University, Faisalabad, Pakistan. At the tender age of 17, he signed up for Vasiyat, or the will, under the plan initiated by the Promised Messiah, thus committing a portion, not less than one-tenth of his lifetime earnings and any property, to the cause of Islam. He got married on the 31st of January, 1977, to Sayyida Amatus Sabu Begum Sahiba, daughter of Zayed Daud Muzaffar Shah Sahib and Sahib Zadi Amatul Hakim Begum. He is blessed with two children, a daughter, Sahib Zadi Amatul Varis Fateh, who is married to Fateh Ahmad Dahiri Sahib of Nawabsha, and a son, Sahib Zada Mirza Waqas Ahmad, who is married to Sahib Zadi Hibatur Rauf. 
In 1977, Sahib Zada Mirza Masroor Ahmad devoted his life for Islam and proceeded to Ghana under the Nasrat Yaha scheme. This social, educational and economic development scheme, initiated by Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi III, supports a large number of hospitals and schools in West Africa. He was the founding principal of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School Salaga in the northern region of Ghana, where he served for two years. Under his devoted care and guardianship, the school went steadily forward. His success at the school made him the obvious choice for the principal of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School at Isacha in the central region of Ghana, where he served for a further four years. He was then appointed as the manager of the Ahmadiyya Agricultural Farm in Dapali in the northern region of Ghana for two years, during which he successfully planted and nurtured wheat as an economic crop for the first time in that country. This was exhibited at an international trade fair and the results were submitted to the Ministry of Agriculture of Ghana. It stands as a great credit to his personal efforts in those experiments that successive presidents of Ghana have commended the Ahmadiyya Muslim community for these highly successful experiments which revolutionized the country's economy and paved the way for self-sufficiency. In 1985 he returned to Pakistan and on the 17th of March 1985 he was appointed as Wakilul Malsani, that is, departmental in charge of financial affairs. On the 18th of June 1994 he was appointed as Director of Education. In August 1988, he was appointed as President Pishti Makbara and Majlis Karpadas, which is the Executive Committee managing the Celestial Graveyard and its related matters. From 1994 to 1997, he was Chairman Nasser Foundation. At the same time, he served as the President of the organization responsible for the beautification of Rabva, the international headquarters of the community. He expanded the Gulshan e Ahmad nursery, and his personal efforts led to reforming Rabva from its barren to its lush green image. Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad also served as a member of the Qada, the jurisprudence board of the community, from 1988 to 1995. In central Khuddamul Ahmadiyya, an auxiliary organization of the community comprising of men between 15 and 40 years of age, Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad served under various capacities, such as the secretary responsible for the physical health of members, secretary for census and membership records, secretary for external chapters, and the vice president of the organization from 1976 to 1990. In central Majlis Ansarullah, an auxiliary organization of the community comprising men over 40 years of age, Sahib Zada Mirza Masru Ahmad served as the secretary responsible for the intellectual progress and physical health of the members during the 1995 term and as the secretary for Quranic education for the terms from 1995 to 1997. On the 10th of December 1997, Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV, may Allah have mercy on him, appointed him as Nazir Allah, that is, the chief executive director of Sada Anjuman Ahmadiyya Pakistan and the Amir of Rabwa. He filled this office with distinction for over five years until his election of Khalifa Tulmasi V. In administrative matters and a disciplined approach to work, he has no parallel. He has the unique quality of getting down to the heart of the matter and dealing with it squarely. While he served as the chief executive director of Sadr Anjuman Ahmadiyya, an office which involved the discharge of heavy responsibilities at the center of the organizational pattern of the movement, he was ready to serve in whatever capacity he was called upon. During this period, he also served as the director for hospitality and in addition, as the director responsible for agricultural matters. In 1999, 
He had the honor of becoming a prisoner in the name of Allah in Rabwa, Pakistan. He was imprisoned on the 30th of April, pursuant to the continuing religious persecution through the inhumane religious persecution laws under section PPC 295B for being the person in charge of the Central Administration Office. He was released on the 10th of May, 1999. Hadrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, Khalifatul Masi IV, passed away at his residence in London at 9.30 a.m. on the 19th of April 2003. Over 40,000 members of the community converged in London. In conformity with the constitution of the community's electoral college, under the chairmanship of Chaudhry Hamidullah Sahib, Executive Director Tariqe Jadid, a meeting of the Electoral College, which was convened on the 22nd of April, after Isha prayers for the purpose of electing the new Khalifa. The meeting was held behind closed doors at the Fazl Mosque, London. As the mosque doors were closed for the meeting, a hush descended over the thousands of members of the community who thronged the surrounding streets. This time was spent by everyone in humble and earnest supplication to the Divine that the members of the Electoral College may be rightly guided in their choice of the successor to Khalifa Tulmasi IV. The whole scene was broadcast live to millions across the world via MTA International. The college met in a deeply prayerful mood. Pursuant to the rules and regulations of the college, each member took an oath of allegiance to the Hilafate Ahmadiyya and then proceeded to the process of election. At 11.40 p.m., the silence ended. The thousands waiting on site and the millions watching on MTA International heard the microphone crackle to life, and Imam Ataul Majib Rashid, the secretary to the Electoral College, made the announcement. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmuduhu wa Nusalli ala Rasulihil Kareem, wa ala Abdihil Masihil Maud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. تمام احباب جماعت ہائے احمدیہ کی اطلاع کے لیے اعلان کیا جاتا ہے کہ آج مورخا 22 اپریل سن 2003 بروز منگل بعد نماز مغرب و عشاء مسجد فضل لندن میں سیدنا حضرت خلیفہ المسیح سانی المسلح المعود رضی اللہ عنہ کی مقرر کردہ مجلس انتخاب خلافت کا اجلاس بس صدارت محترم چودری حمید اللہ صاحب منعقد ہوا جس میں حسب قوائد ہر رکھ نے خلافت احمدیہ سے وابستگی کا حلف اٹھایا اور اس کے بعد مکرم و محترم صاحب زادہ مرزا مسرور احمد صاحب سلمہو ربہو کو خلیفت المسیح منتخب کیا عراقینِ عراقین مجلس انتخاب خلافت نے اسی وقت حضرت امیر المومنین خلیفہ المسیح الخامس حیدہ اللہ تعالی بنصرح العزیز وعطال اللہ بقاہ کے دست مبارک پر بیعت کا شرف حاصل کر لیا ہے MTA cameras were allowed in the Fuzzle Mosque with permission of the newly elected Khalifa Hadrat Khalifa Tulmasi V then made a brief address. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawm Din. Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ehdina sirat al-mustaqeen Ehdina sirat al-mustaqeen Sirat al-lazina namta alayhim Fair al-maghubi alayhim wal-dhalleen 
احباب جماعت سے صرف ایک درخواست ہے کہ آج کل دعاؤں پہ زور دیں دعاؤں پہ زور دیں دعاؤں پہ زور دیں بہت دعائیں کریں بہت دعائیں کریں بہت دعائیں کریں اللہ تعالیٰ اپنی تائید و نصرت فرمائے اور احمدیت کا کہ قافلہ اپنی ترقیات کی طرف رواں دوا رہے آمین بیٹھ جائیں Hudur Anwar, Khalifa Tulmasi V, asked everyone to sit down. In an instant, the thousands who were present, whether they were in the mosque, in the complex, on the pavements, or on the roads around the mosque, everyone spontaneously took to the floor. This spectacle was incredible, like a wave in the ocean. The tide of humanity sat down immediately. This level of obedience and adherence shown to the call of the newly elected Khalifa was unprecedented in the modern day. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu Those who were outside the Fazl Mosque together with the millions of Jamaat members across the world took the oath of allegiance at his blessed hand. As soon as the choice of the electoral college became known, it was universally felt as if comfort and consolation were descending upon every heart from heaven. On the 23rd of April, at Islamabad, Tilford, the funeral prayers over the beloved departed, led by the newly elected Khalifa, and his interment later on the same day were a deeply moving experience for everyone. An experience which was born of conflicting emotions, of grief and bereavement on the one hand, and steadfast submission to the divine will and a firm resolve to march forward in earnestness, giving of one's very best on the other. Hadrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmisi V, was called to his exalted office at a mature age in the face of the most poignant tragedy of the death of Hadrat Khalifa Tulmisi IV, and by the grace and mercy of God, has proved himself an inexhaustible source of comfort and consolation to all members of the movement. He possesses a firm but gentle disposition, which is characterized chiefly by shyness and modesty. It has been observed, however, that when the occasion so demands, he does not fail to provide dashing leadership. From the beginning of his Khilafat, he has given proof of great zeal and drive. In the when I went there, I didn't know that I'm going to such a place where uh, there is no light, no gas, no water. Salamu, 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 salamu alaykum ya jamma, salamu alaykum ya jamma, ah salamu alaykum. We bore witness to love. Love that transcends color and borders from the blessed people of Ghana for Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih. They returned the love and care this humble servant gave to them for eight years until the entire nation reached out to him and embraced him as her own. When I was here, I did not think of abandoning this country. I considered myself to be a Ghanaian. Join us on this unforgettable journey in this two-part series as we tread the footsteps of humility and humanity exemplified by Hazur as a young devotee. A very unassuming, gentle and a humble human being. Witness the example of dedication. That man was good. He, if not because of him, like this school will not come to stay. Witness the example of love. That's my best friend. <laughs> he was teaching you English. Witness the example of brotherhood. Pre President today, Huzu mm -hmm. could lay his head with us.
It's an example of humility, it's an example of obedience, it's an example of commitment, it's an example of recognizing a human being for his worth. This was the moment dreamt by the thousands and yet not witnessed until 1970 when Hazrat Khalifa al Masih III graced Ghana with his presence. Little did anyone know what blessed doors this visit would open in the future. Love for all and hatred for none is what Hazur had preached and on his return from Ghana he put it into practice like never before by launching the Nusrat Jahan scheme. Under the scheme schools and hospitals were started around Ghana and then eventually all over Africa. When I decided to sacrifice my life for work in the Tariqedi office was, uh, I think, they didn't need me because they thought that uh, we don't want somebody who is uh, qualified in this particular subject. I wrote directly to Hussle Masih Salish and he marked that letter to Tariqedi. So Tariqedi replied back to Hussle Masih Salish that uh, we don't need this boy at present. As soon as Hussle Salish received this letter, he said, you don't need him, but I need him. Huh? Then he asked me to go to, through Nusra Jahan to Africa, Ghana. He embraced me, and that was the first ever experience I had by embracing any of the Khalifas. <laughs> so anyway, then I went to Ghana. The very important thing he asked me that, remember, that you are going to Ghana as Waqfi Zindagi teacher. Eh? And also remember that you belong to the family of Prophet Muhammad Islam. And uh, people there will always keep their eyes on you. So always remember Allah and don't do any act which is against the teachings of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. Sahib Zada Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad dedicated his life and through the scheme was posted to a very remote and unknown part of northern Ghana as headmaster for the secondary school Jamaat had started in the small town of Salaga. So straight from the comforts of Pakistan to the harshness of the barren north where Hazur spent an entire year by himself humbly carrying out his duties. The principal of the school took me along with him from Kumasi to that place, Salaga. It is the remotest town in northern region of Ghana. The house was very small, two rooms, just four, three, four feet. On one side there was a kitchen then toilet bath. Eh? I stayed uh, alone for almost uh, one year without my family. First I learnt making chapatis there from our missionaries who was living in Tamale. Early morning for the breakfast and normally I used to take bread and uh, egg and so on. No afternoon lunch, hmm? like an evening after clothing from the school. Around four o'clock, I'll prepare my food, sardine or yam, or prepare some uh, chapatis. I lost almost uh, 25 pounds of my weight at that time. Hmm? And later on, it was okay. So I enjoyed that adventure also. That was an adventure. 